database terminology. Let's take a look at entities first. An entity is an actor or object in a system or organization that eventually becomes a table in a database. It may be a thing, like a customer, or an event, like a transaction. A table in a database is a class in an object-oriented programming language like Java or C++. To extrapolate, classes and tables represent in code and database structures the actual concrete objects contained within a real-world system. Next, let's take a look at attributes. Attributes are the characteristics, qualities, and properties of classes or tables in a database. In programming languages like C++ and Java, attributes are sometimes called member data or data members. In database tables, attributes are referred to as fields. When a table is displayed, each field is called a column. This brings us to records. Records in a database are instances of a table or class. A table or class is not an actual record. Rather, they are just the blueprints for building an actual object or record. So when you take a table or class and create a record or instance from it, the process is therefore called instantiation. Whereas an attribute or a field of a table or a class, as some call it, is a column, a record or instance of a table is a row. And then there are keys. A primary key is a unique value that identifies each record of a table. No other record has that same primary key. A compound primary key is created when two fields together make up a table's primary key. And a foreign key is a non-primary key field in one table that acts as the primary key of another table. Now we come to data types. Different fields may have different data types. A data type defines the kind of data contained in a field. Examples of data types are text, like a string value, numbers, like an integer or a float or a double, currency, and date objects. A field can only hold data that corresponds to its data type. Each data type allocates a specific amount of memory. If someone attempts to store a value in a field that does not match its data type, a type mismatch occurs when the memory set aside for the field cannot contain its value. The tables that represent the entities of a company or organization within a relational database have relationships. Relationships govern the interaction between entities and the tables that represent them in that database. The relationship between tables are governed by three basic cardinalities. The first type of cardinal relationship in a relational database is the one-to-one -one relationship. In this relationship, one instance of the first entity is related to one instance of the second entity. For example, Acme Products manufactures defective gadgets for immobilizing roadrunners. A customer entity, Wiley Coyote, purchases a pair of strap-on racket skates. Each pair of racket skates comes with one warranty, and each warranty covers one pair of racket skates. This creates a one-to-one -one relationship between the warranties table and the products table. The second type of cardinal relationship in a relational database is the one-to-many relationship. In this relationship, one instance of the first entity is related to many instances of the second entity. These relationships are established by using the primary key of one table as a foreign key in another table. For example, Acme customers create an online account and are assigned a single sales rep, say Bugs Bunny. When Wiley Coyote orders, he may only order through his one assigned sales rep, Bugs Bunny. However, each sales rep is assigned to many customers. This creates a one-to-many relationship between the sales rep and customer tables. The third type of cardinal relationship in a relational database is the many-to-many -many relationship. In this relationship, one instance of the first entity is related to many instances of the second entity, and one instance of the second entity is related to many instances of the first entity. Many-to-many -many relationships require a table based on a third entity that associates the other two tables with each other in the relationship. For example, a single Acme order can be sent in more than one shipment, and a single shipment can contain more than one order. This creates a many-to-many -many or reciprocal relationship between the order table and the shipment table that could be linked by a third table, say, the transactions table. Now let's look at calculated fields and queries. A calculated field is determined at runtime when a query or transaction is made against a database. Unlike normal fields, calculated fields do not require the user to input data into them. Rather, they acquire data from other fields and dynamically generate values based on the results. A query performs searches, calculations, and manipulates data within a database. 
Good database design incorporates normalization. The goal of database normalization is to remove data redundancy. This is done by removing repeating columns and rows of repeating fields. This streamlines databases, making them more efficient as they consume less memory, and it decreases the likelihood of errors and inconsistencies in the database. Normalization attempts to prevent GIGO, or garbage in, garbage out. Normalization progresses through four different forms, 1NF, or first normal form, 2NF, or second normal form, 3NF, or third normal form, and 4NF sometimes, or fourth normal form. In order for data to be organized in a higher form of normalization, it must also meet the conditions of the forms beneath it. Let's continue um, discussing database normalization and relationships, and we'll look at how following or practicing um, normalization can help you make your databases more efficient um, and less erroneous and just more streamlined. So when you design your table structure, patterned after your entities in a relational database, you want to keep normalization and the different forms of normalization in mind. So we'll take a look at you know, just these different forms. Remember the goal of normalization is to remove data redundancy. And we're going to go over three basic forms. Um, first norm normal form, second normal form, and third normal form. First normal form sets very basic rules for an organized database and they split larger tables with repeating fields into smaller tables. But the idea is you want to eliminate repeating rows. And second normal form um, you want to basically, you know, again, try to uh, continue the process of eliminating any type of you know, unnecessary columns in the database table that don't depend on the primary key. Um, if you have a compound or composite primary key, you want to get rid of that. You want to split it up into multiple tables and set it up so that you know, there's only one single primary key in each table. And then you may create like a third table where you'll combine um, this those tables together, build a relationship between them. And then there's third normal form, um, which is, again, just carrying the process a bit further and making sure that all of the data is only dependent on the primary key and that the tables are broken up in, into smaller tables and you know, with relationships set up between them. So to start off the process, let's, let's take a look at an unnormalized table first. If you take a look at this table, and then notice, you know, here's the key field value. So if you look at the syntax, if it's underlined, that means it's the primary key. So this is an unnormalized table. And you can tell because, look, here's the primary key. However, the problem is, is that look at these repeating rows. Okay, so it's, it's kind of unattractive. And it creates the possibility of errors being in the database because you'll have more than one, you know, pretty much more than one record in a single record. All right, so really this should be split up into multiple records. So that's a problem with the, you know, with the repeating rows there. Another problem is, is that um, this is not all dependent upon the primary key. The primary key is order ID. And maybe an order date has something to do with an order ID. And maybe the quantity of the item purchased on that date or ordered on that date has something to do with the order ID. Um, but the product description, you know, that doesn't really have anything to do with order ID. That has something to do with product ID but not with order ID. So when you look at this table at a glance, you can tell that if you're gonna normalize it, one of the first things you ought to do is split it up into multiple tables. And you know, by doing that, you would you know, create a products table where product description would be completely dependent or functionally dependent, as they say, on the product ID, that the primary key for the product table. And then all of the other items here would be functionally dependent only on the order ID. So it's kind of the idea behind normalization. We want to take this inefficient, large, unnormalized table and break it up into smaller chunks of bits and pieces that are normalized, where everything's dependent on the primary key. So first off, let's look at taking a, you know, an unnormalized table and bringing it into first normal form. And to do that, we can just give it a compound primary key. In other words, if instead of just making order ID the primary key, if I combine order ID and product ID together into a compound primary key, I will eliminate these repeating rows. So drop down here to first normal form, and, and that's what we've done. Notice the syntax, order ID and product ID are now both the primary key values. So it's compound primary key. And if we do that, we've eliminated you know, product ID and these repeating rows here under one order ID. So now we have, you know, it's the unique combination of both the order ID and the product ID. So no two combinations of these are the same. And so it's just one row all the way down. 
However, it's only first normal form. We still have the problem that not all of these values are completely dependent upon the primary key. And that's our goal. That's what we should accomplish or how we should design the database. So we want to take it a little bit higher. We want to go from unnormalized to first normal form. And now we want to take it from first normal form into second normal form. And to do that, we've got, we're going to have to break it up into multiple tables. So looking at this in first normal form, let's take a look at putting it into second normal form. Now we're going to split it into two tables. We're going to ditch or get rid of the compound primary key. And now we're going to have one table that consists of orders. And both of these are functionally dependent on the primary key, right? The date the order took place on and the quantity of the item purchased in the order are both dependent on the order ID. So nothing funky there. Now look at the second table. The product description is completely and functionally dependent on the primary key product ID. So that's good. So we've split it into two tables. We've eliminated a, a bit more redundancy. We've organized it a little bit better, made it more efficient, streamlined it, normalized it. However, we'll need a third table. You know, to achieve this, we still need a way to link an order, uh, you know, and a product ID and, and product description together. And so to do that, we're going to create a transactions table. And in the transactions table, again, we could use a compound primary key. Um, the transactions could simply be the combination of the order ID and the product ID. Now, again, that's not the best way to do it. Remember that, you know, compound primary keys are kind of a kludge. We want to try to avoid that in, in good database design, but um, this would at least get it into, you know, pretty much second normal form. We split that table into an orders table and a products table instead of lumping it all together there. And now we've created a third table to link that together. So, you know, we could basically link and, and I could just pull up the transactions table. I could look at a transaction and say, okay, I could, you know, from there I could go to the order table and figure out the date and the quantity. And I could go to the products table and figure out what it was. So second normal form. Now, let's look at moving this, this from second normal form into third normal form, which would basically mean we need to eliminate this compound primary key. So in third normal form, Again, we're going to have you know, the orders table and the products table like we did in second normal form. We're going to get rid of that compound primary key. And to do that, we just added another primary key into the transactions table. And then now, instead of being primary keys or compound primary keys, these are simply foreign keys. They're primary keys in their own table, but we're just using them as foreign keys in the transactions table. And it has its own primary key, transaction ID. And it's true that both of these as foreign keys are functionally dependent upon the primary key of the transactions table. So therefore we've achieved third normal form. And that would just be a, you know, it's, it's a, a more streamlined, more efficient way to set up and design our database tables. We're trying to figure out how to create, you know, the tables of the entities in a company or an organization. And we're trying to design our relational database. We just want to keep in the back of our mind, in the back of our brains, the idea that, you know, how can we set these tables up so they are normalized? And how can we achieve the highest form of normalization possible, okay? Let's take a look at another example. Here we have a table, PC customers. And at a glance, you can tell that it's not in a high form of normalization. First off, let's look at the primary key, customer ID. Well, a customer's name and their address, and maybe even the tech assigned to them, do depend on the primary key. So they're functionally dependent on the primary key. However, here's the problem. This column, a text name, it does not depend on the customer's ID or the primary key. Instead, it depends on tech ID. So we can tell at a glance that we should split this up into multiple tables. We should have a technician's table and a customer's table. Customer ID can serve as the primary key for the customer's table, and tech ID can serve as the primary key for the technician's table. And then therefore, tech name would be placed in that table, and it would be functionally dependent on its primary key. Now, we can still use tech ID as a foreign key, and make it relate to or make it functionally dependent upon the customer ID, but, you know, not tech name. So we can tell, again, at a glance, that we should split that table into multiple tables. So let's bring it to a higher form of normalization. So to do this, we'll make the customer's table. And if we look, name and address are both functionally dependent on the primary key, and tech ID can serve as a foreign key in the table. So we're good as far as the customer's table. And then we'll make the technician's table. In this case, tech ID will be the primary key, and tech name is true, completely or functionally dependent upon the primary key. And 
Of course, we could add many other fields and columns here, social security number, pay rate, you know, all kinds of things. But you get the idea. You know, the goal is to bring it to a higher form of normalization. And if we needed to, we could create a third table that would link these two tables together if there were some kind of relationship we had to represent our cardinality inside the database. Also, it bears mentioning, although we won't cover it today, um, there is a fourth normal form. And in addition, there's also a domain key normal form, or DKNF. And it uniquely identifies rows in a table. Domains are sets of permissible values for attributes, and domain restrictions are enforced to ensure the database is kept free from modification anomalies. Again, garbage in uh, is garbage out. So if you can mask or control, you know, tightly control the input of data and tightly apply rules to a database, you're going to end up with a better, more efficient, more accurate database. Um, you, know, you don't want loosey-goosey. And obviously we want to get into the highest form of normalization possible when we're designing our database tables and setting up our relationships based on an organization's or a company's actual entities. So just bear that in mind or keep that in mind in your database and table design process.